Hey everybody, Justin here, and today I have my first Parallel Ashcan Pete deck. So Parallel Ash Ashcan Pete came out recently, uh, and then I did a stream where I read the article, and then I built the deck, and I played the deck. So this week, we got the deck. Next week, we got the gameplay of this deck, with a slight change. I did make one small change, which I'll get to once we get to the cards. But first, if you don't know who Parallel Ashcan Pete is, you can find a link to his announcement article in the previous video in the description. Um, but I also got the cards here for your viewing pleasure. So, Parallel Ashcan Pete. Four brain, two book, three fist, three foot. You begin the game with Pete's guitar in play. As a reaction, when a card you own that is attached to a scenario card would be discarded, add it to your hand instead. Limit once per round. That's a very nice ability, and it opens up the player cards in a way that no other investigator has for certain survivor cards, and even guardian cards that we're going to see on this list coming up here. Uh, Elder Sign Effect is plus one. Choose a card you own attached to a scenario card. You may return the chosen card to your hand. He soaks for seven and seven, so a lot more than our good friend Original Ashcan Pete. And he also uh, has higher fist than our Original Ashcan Pete. Notably, his deck size is still 30, and his deck building options are Survivor 0 to 3. So he actually does not get Survivor 4 and 5, which isn't much, admittedly. He has Improvised and Tactics 0 to 4, which is an awesome pool of cards for his playstyle. It's a really nice deck building options here. He also can have up to five other Guardian cards level 0 just for fun. You can put those in as well. His deck building requirements can do include Duke and Racked by Nightmares. However, both of his new signatures that come with the parallel, they're not advanced versions of them. Instead, they're actually replacements. So you can choose to include... Uh, the guitar in hard times over Duke and Rack by Nightmares, or you can include all four. You can't do Pete's guitar in Rack by Nightmares, for example. There needs to be, if you do one replacement, you have to do the other replacement. On to Pete's guitar, which is an absolutely phenomenal card. It's a two cost asset. It's an item instrument that takes no hands to play, just a magic guitar. You know how it is. Uh, Jim, Jim's looking at his trumpet, being like, What did I do to you? What did I do to you? Right? But Pete, his guitar is just, you know, magically floating. He can play it whenever he wants. And it also starts in play uh, if you're playing with the parallel front. Uh, the Lightning Bolt ability on Pete's guitar is Exhaust Pete's guitar. Choose a non-elite enemy at your location or a connecting location. Move that enemy once in the direction of your choice. Then, if there are no enemies at your location, either heal a horror or gain a resource. That's really good. That's, that's very good. Notably, you need to be able to choose an enemy to do the second half of it. You can't just gain a resource or heal a horror if there's no enemies to choose, because it is a them comma. So you have to do the first part to do the second part. However, enemies are pretty easy to come by, and moving them around and controlling where enemies go is a very, very powerful effect. Like, I mean very powerful. However, I'm not going to go out here and say that I think Ash Campede is broken. In my playtest of Ashcan Pete with this deck, admittedly only one game, so it's very limited, I found that I was actually running out of steam towards the end, and I don't really kill things, I more just kind of manage enemies. Ashcan Pete Parallel is the professional kicking the can down the road investigator. So that's what we're going to do. We have enemies, we're going to keep kicking the can down the road. Hard Times is a signature weakness. It's a replacement as well. Put Hard Times to play in your threat area. After you draw one or more cards, choose and discard that many cards from your hand. Discard Hard Times. So this is not a like a tough weakness. It is an annoying weakness, and it's a weakness that you're going to want to solve. But it's also one of those weaknesses that just kind of lulls you into a false sense of security. You're like, oh, I'll have this stick around for a turn or two. And then suddenly you're like, why have I made no progress in my hand? Sure, I'm going to add cards with my ability, but you're not actually going to be drawing new cards. So it's like one of those things where it doesn't really hurt you, but it is going to like stop you from being, of keeping up with the game, so to speak. Like you're going to like kind of like dwindle on your card draw resources until you get rid of it. Like Racked by Nightmares though, it's very easy to get rid of just a double action. So if the time is right, it's just two actions, eat it up, it's gone. It's not terrible. Why don't we dive into the deck list itself? So... Here is our deck list. You can find a link down in the description that is currently just an Ashcan Pete deck. Um, just like the normal one. So you're going to see a lot of these blue cards crossed the hell out. That's okay. Once the parallel one comes up, I'll try to remember to update the deck list. If I don't and you're watching this, 
give me a shout in the comments. I'll do it. Uh, notably as well, uh, I did a live deck building on Twitch for this, and the, uh, the video is actually currently on the Patreon channel, so if you want to join our Patreon and watch that, see the thought process, you can find it there. Uh, Alright, uh, Granny Orn. Uh, she, we only have, as you can see, we only actually have two assets in our deck. Uh, four, cop four copies, but only two um, different assets. Uh, everything else is events or skills. And actually, you can see that we actually only have two skills in this deck as well. And everything else is kind of just events. Granny Orn, she's here because she gives us a brain. You could do the upgraded version. Um, I went with just this one because my experience was spent in other places. This was my first pa uh, Ashcan par uh, Parallel Ashcan Pete deck. So it was kind of a little bit of me just trying to play with a bunch of cards that... I've never played with before to see them in action and see what Ash Pete could do with them because, as I said earlier in the video, what Ash Pete does is he opens up an entirely new part of the player pool that hasn't really found a home yet, which is super awesome. My weapon of choice in this deck was Enchanted Bow, mostly just because it it did what I wanted. It, I, I didn't need to spend a lot of work, because if we go back to the stats here, I have four brain. I didn't want to spend a lot of work trying to like match my fist or get my fist to where I need it to be I wanted to kill small enemies like what if I found an acolyte right like or what if I found just something that I needed to kill that had two health or an aloof enemy and I wanted to save on actions and I think Enchanted Bow does a really good job of that and I liked it actually I think it worked really well in this deck that's also why Granny Orn is here because she works well with Enchanted Bow and that's kind of like my choice for at least this deck for how I went to kill things, and it went very well. You'll see next week, but we played. Uh, I played Search for Kadath and uh, did pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. Now let's go on to the fun cards. We have Ambush here. So this is a tactic. Going back to Ashcan Pete. When a card you own that is attached to a scenario card would be discarded, add it to your hand instead. Scenario cards, easy reference. Locations, enemies, treacheries act agendas, uh, scenario card. <laughs> Those are all like scenario cards. Like the, uh, I'm pretty sure the, the reference for what the symbols are, look you me, I'm doing this and you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But the, the, the token reference card, I'm pretty sure is also a scenario card. So ambush attached to your location. If there are no investigators at attached location, discard ambush. But after an enemy spawns at attached location, deal two damage to that enemy and discard ambush. Then, you bring it back to your hand. Notably, it's very hard, I actually found it very hard to run out of resources with this deck because you're using Pete's guitar every turn to move enemies around and then just make money. That's pretty sick. And if there's two enemies, kill one, send the other one out, still make some money. Really nice. So ambush is just a way to like kill enemies. That's kind of like what it is. It also has some synergy with King in the Hornet's Nest, which I will get to. Barricade. Not only enemies cannot move into attached location, when Investigator leaves attached location, discard Barricade. Stop, enemies. This is just like, this is kind of like, at least with this deck, the whole thesis of it, which is basically just trying to control enemies and not directly kill enemies. It's, it's very interesting and very fun. I had a great time with it. Actually, probably some of the most fun I've had in Arkham. I enjoyed playing Susie. But I didn't, like, I didn't, like, cackle madly when I was playing Susie. Like, I loved the hell out of Parallel Ashcan Pete. And Barricade is part of that puzzle. The biggest part of the puzzle, though, actually was Hiding Spot. This card was MVP. <laughs> so let's just say, for example, you had a lot of non-elite enemies at a location, and you were, like, just putting them all there. It was the timeout zone, so to speak. Or your mosh bit where you're playing your guitar, you're just strumming up, and everyone's going, like, freaking crazy. But you need to get through there. How do you do that? Hiding spot. Fast. Attach hiding spot to any location. Each non-elite enemy at attached location gains aloof. At the end of the enemy, enemy phase, if a ready enemy is at attached location, discard hiding spot. Now, doesn't that seem pretty damn good? <laughs> just like a fast, be able to just ignore enemies. And you can just move through. And then when it's discarded, it comes back. My thesis for this deck was Makeshift Trap. Like, this was, like, my starting point. I said thesis twice in this video, so you know I'm a little bit of a nerd. But uh, with Makeshift Trap, my thought process was that if Makeshift Trap was the card that I want to keep bringing back, but actually Hiding Spot was the one I wanted to bring back more often, which was a little bit funky. 
it was very interesting. Hiding spot was very good. Kicking the hornet's nest as well was also really damn good. Because the big problem with kicking the hornet's nest is that you kind of lose on, like, if you grab the wrong enemy at the wrong time, it can be really bad because you spent one of your actions to play it. So unless you can have, like, you can mitigate it a little bit, it's kind of a little bit awkward. At least I found in practice. However, Pete's guitar solves the problem. So this card basically just says, hey, grab an enemy, grab a clue, grab some resources, grab another resource or heal a horror. That's really good. Live and Learn was um, of a change I made. So I said there was a change in this deck. So I originally ran two copies of Resourceful because I was like, I'm a survivor deck. I would like to use Resourceful. However, in this deck, I actually never tested Book, Fist, or Foot. Unless the game forced me to. I was only testing Brain. I was actually making very few tests. I think I made five tests in the whole scenario, which is crazy. Like, that's probably a bit of a lie. Like, it was like maybe like 10 at the most, but that's like very little. Everything I was doing was just controlling the game without taking tests, which is powerful, yes. However, when I needed to take tests, I wasn't that good at it because my deck wasn't designed for it. And I think Live and Learn is better than Resourceful because my idea with Resourceful was more luckies or more makeshift traps or more take hearts. And Live and Learn basically just cuts out what I really wanted it for, which was just more luckies. Speaking of luckies, there's Lucky. Next row, down. Lure allows you to control enemy movement. So this is like, you can move uh, when hunter enemies move. I'll be honest, this one actually didn't come up in the test, in the test scenario because there were no hunter enemies. Uh, so I can't say much about this, but... I do think that there is a lot of really good potential with this card and Parallel Ash Campete, and I'm excited to see it in a more campaign-like environment. Makeshift Trap, we had Improved Timer, Poisonous, Remote Configuration, and Net, which allowed us to put it on other, uh, other locations. Notably, because Ash Campete doesn't have Survivor 05 or 04, he can't do all 10. However, you see I have 8 there because we have Improvised 04 in Parallel Ash Campete. Marksmanship. I guess I should talk about... Makeshift sure Trap has a lot going for it. The idea is pretty simple. It comes back into your hand. You can control the timer so you can have it come back when you want to. Remember, you only get one card added to your hand each round. So if you have a bunch of stuff that's going to be cascading uh, and triggering in one, in one round or one turn, that's going to not be great for you because you're only going to get one of them back. And you're going to want to try to get... You're going to want each one to come back as much as you can, I feel anyway. I went with just kind of like control and damage, and that's like why um, po uh, remote configuration, poisonous, and net were my choices. Uh, and improved timer as well allows you to control when it's going to be coming back to your hand. Marksmanship was a little bit of fun with the enchanted bow. It's kind of just there to be a little bit enjoyable. On the hunt fills a very similar spot to kicking the hornet's nest. While we can't really kill enemies that well, um, I think this deck could be more focused on that. Again, this was just like my first iteration of it. Uh, on the hunt is just like good enemy economy you know you kill the enemy you grab the enemy you want you kill it with the bow you move it away from you it's really good snare trap this is uh, after non-elite enemy enters attached location exhaust an enemy uh, disengage while investigators and hash snare trap to it just basically more synergy with ash can Pete's ability and playing with a card that at this point i never played with and admittedly it didn't do too much for me in this scenario but like lure uh, in Search for Gadath, there's not a lot of hunting. The last three cards here are really simple. Toe-to-toe -to -toe just deals more damage. I want to deal damage. Guts was my, my neutral skill of choice because of Enchanted Bow. And Take Heart because cards and money are very good. I don't know what else really there is to say. I think Parallel Ash Pete is a really good design. I think... No matter how powerful he is and how good Pete's guitar is, I do think that it's incredible that he opens up the card pool in a way that previously was unopened. Would I have preferred this to be a new investigator um, with like, like a Wilson Richards, for example, the handyman? Yeah, that would be cool. But with the how there has been no signs of a new release... It's at least nice to get something that allows us as players to explore the card pool in a way that is free, first off, because he's a print and play, and second off, just right now. So I do really appreciate that, 
And he also feels flavorfully very Ashcan Pete. I like the kind of like the duality of regular Ashcan Pete has Duke in play, parallel Ashcan Pete has Pete's guitar in play. And I like the idea of playing Ashcan Pete parallel, but then still putting Duke in your deck so you can draw him and play him and do some fun stuff with Duke. I think it's a great time. I think he's a great investigator, and I'm excited to see what the community can come up with. And I'm excited for more parallel investigators in the future, because they said there are more coming in the coming months, so that is freaking awesome. In the meantime, huge thank you to all of our patrons. Again, you can find the deck building video live on Patreon right now. But in the meantime, have a good one. I love you. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, a GG's.